Hi everyone, Mike, your local farmer here with Mount Hope Farms, and today we're going to talk about our strategies for attracting some of the smartest, hardest working, most dependable workers you can find out there. So follow along and we'll show you some of what we're doing here on the farm. Now, as many of you may know, out here on the farm, when it comes to growing the crops, it's primarily me and my dad doing most of the work. So, maybe asking yourself at this point, what do they really know about attracting these hard workers, these awesome workers? Well, these aren't really your traditional workers. All you have to do to get these workers to come in is put up a few of these. What that is, is it's an owl nest box. The reason I like these workers is they don't demand a whole lot from us. We already have plenty of feed out there for them in our fields. All that we're trying to do is just give them a little helping hand, provide them a little bit of a home to stay in, and let them do their work. Because uh, I've seen research that says uh, one owl family will consume up to 3,000 rodents per year, and that makes a pretty good dent in our uh, rodent population out here. We've had issues in the past where rodents have caused us some very significant damage in our field crops. So we like to look for any, any of the tools at our disposal to help keep those populations in check because as with most any uh, wildlife populations, they'll go through these cyclical highs and lows. They'll go through where they spike and where they drop off to about nothing. And so I'm not trying to go out there and eliminate every mouse in the field. I'm just trying to keep those spikes from being quite so high and keep it more mellowed out and moderated out at a nice livable level. Now this particular box is for screech owls. We have one spot in our farm out here that kind of cuts right through the middle of it that's pasture ground, has a creek going through it, and some steep hillsides that we just don't really want to farm for our field crops or our other crops at this point in time. And so we're looking at putting up these screech owl boxes. The reason for this is their habit when they hunt is to perch on low branches and swoop down at their prey. So this is an ideal fit for them. In the more wide open areas, we're going to be putting up kestrel boxes, sparrowhawk boxes, and barn owl boxes. We have some barn owl boxes up already, but the boxes we've built ourselves, they're out of ply board, they require a lot more maintenance and upkeep over the years, and they do have a lifespan. We put them up in the early 2000s, and we're starting to see some of them rotten out and falling apart where they have to be replaced. I don't like having to mess with things any more than I absolutely have to because I've got a bunch on my plate. I can't you know, remember to go back through and check these things as often as they probably need to be. So if it's something that I can set up and kind of walk away from and forget about it for a bit, that really fits fits with me. That's what I really like. And these are made out of a durable plastic material. They're not going to rot. They're not going to corrode. They're going to work for us. The company that we got these from, the name down there underneath, is the Barn Owl Box Company. And it's got some of their contact information there. Really a nicely well-built box. A little bit spendy, but you figure you spend it once, the box is out there forever. They also sent out all the needed hardware to mount those up, as well as nice instructions for how to go about mounting these boxes up. These ones get screwed directly onto trees because there again, we're looking at the habitat that they're going to want, what's going to be best for them, and where they're going to fit. And that for us is in our pasture area in between some of our fields. Here we have one of our owl boxes mounted up in the walnut tree. The ones that are out more exposed like this are subject to a lot more rotten deterioration and they wear out a lot faster. There's another one that was down in the other walnut tree that, well, it is no longer in that tree. It finally succumbed to some rotten deterioration and it fell out here in one of the last windstorms. Okay, these boxes are some of them that are mounted down here on our barn. 
the one down there at the end we had a family of owls that hatched out there was at least four little ones inside of that box and we know that's going to go on to make a pretty big dent in our rodent population out here in the fields they're going to be eating field mice voles and everything of that sort to their heart's content the one downside that we've found to having boxes around the buildings and we've said in retrospect we would not put them in our barns ever again is these barn owls dad uh, lovingly is nicknamed a flying cow as because when they roost up above your equipment they make a mess now that mess will eventually eat through the paint we've been in here and cleaned these this equipment up several times over but because they continue to go and perch up above our equipment we keep on getting these wonderful wonderful little messes that are going to create some excessive wear on the paint job on our equipment so that's the one downside to this we've thought about putting a few things up to discourage them from roosting right above our equipment we're still looking into that and toying with what ideas we may want to implement so that we can discourage them from being in the buildings but the barn owl box company they have a kit for a barn owl box now they are more expensive because they are a lot larger than the other boxes but they have a kit that will allow you to pull mount those so we could put them on a post out in the field and let them stay out there i'm going to walk over here because in this clover field you can see some of the effects of rodents on our stand i hate seeing the field looking tore up like this one does with them but that's the way things go we don't always we don't always get things to look the way we really want them to out here and that's just kind of the nature of farming now on the hillside out here this is a red clover field we noticed last summer after we harvested that we were still having some rodent population issues on this back hillside we've seen hawks working this we've seen a lot of uh, herons out here mousing we've got barn cats coming out our ears up here around the barns to keep stuff down but we still have some issues out there all those little brown spots most of those are mouse colonies you know voles mice small rodents out here and they've been mowing the clover off around those areas this is the worst of it that we have but we're still having some problems now off in the distance you can see a little pole sticking up we've got perches sitting on top of that to try and encourage them here again this is on the edge of our field so it doesn't interfere with our work in the field we're trying to encourage hawks owls all kinds of critters they're going to eat on those mice to fly our fields to get out there and get to work so that's a little glimpse of what they can do there have been years really bad years a number of years ago where we saw crop losses that were probably approaching 50 percent of the field being chewed off especially when they get active right before harvest when it's right before harvest they have good ground cover stuff can't pick them off very easy and all it takes to ruin your crop is one bite through the stem where your seed is sitting and that's all the more it takes for them to kill that crop every time they bite a seed head off all of that seed is gone it's not going to fill out and when it's a grass seed field when it's a clover field any of those it does not take very many mice to really wreak havoc in it but we haven't had those kind of population issues for a lot of years partly because we're taking advantage of everything we can out here to make sure oh, and there's some of our hawks flying i can catch them there's one of them we're taking advantage of all of these to help keep these populations
populations in check. I really, I love watching those hawks work. In the summertime when we have the crops off out here, there's been times where we can run the tractors, the equipment right up next to them. They'll get so fat with the field mice and everything out there that they're feeding on and so tame that they won't even mind us run a tractor right up beside them. I've gotten within 10, 15 feet of them on the ground and most of the time they'll just kind of hop and take a couple of steps away and go back to feeding and working on mice. It's really great to see that stuff working and it's really great to see nature working with us on the farm out here. See what it can do to help us out and what we can do to help it out. Now here's one of the boxes pretty well set up, ready to be installed. You can see we've gotten the plastic bolts put in through here. Those allow this access door to be put on after you've gotten it installed. There's also a mesh that goes on with some plastic tabs through the front and back that allow the little ones to be able to climb up to the hole and it's been bedded. What I used is what I had on hand around here and that's some pine shavings and I also have a little bit of cedar toe down underneath. I know some people aren't a fan of cedar toe. We've always felt like a little touch of that in there works as a bit of an insect control. It helps keep some mites and some of those problems at bay. And so that's why we put that in there. You can see there's some vent holes down beneath. That's the level that the instruction said to fill it to is just up to those first vent holes. And then there's more of them up in the roof, you know, under the eaves of the roof on this to allow good air flow through. There's also a plate here. This is what will get screwed down to the tree. And these four bolts should all line up and go through the four holes in the back of the box. Now one of the things I've noticed on this when I'm installing is it's tough to find a real flat spot on a tree to put these. It's free of limbs, don't have anything in the way, that's at the right height, that's not leaning too much one way or the other. It's doable, but you have to be kind of picky. And if that tree isn't perfectly flat, it will pull and warp this back plate a little bit, which in turn tips the bolts out or in or one way or another. It can be a little tricky to get them on. Sometimes you have to kind of tap them on a little bit. Sometimes you have to start a couple of the nuts with the washers in the inside of it and kind of walk it in, tapping to get the last one to come on. But it's really not too bad and as far as the easy setup, the instructions are great. They walk you right through all of this. Really simple and easy. And they have tons of information on their site about these. Here we are back in the pasture. This is one of the spots that we uh, have a box mounted up here at. Lots of low branches. They say to mount these roughly oh, 8 to 10 feet off the ground. This one is probably a bit higher than that. A lot of mine end up being that way. I think it should be okay. Um, but it's mounted up back here. You can see that plate like I talked about deflected a little bit. Made it a little bit of a pain to get. And the final plate's put on. The nuts are tightened down on it. So it's all secured. And there's the hole where they will go in at. Looking out from it, they have some nice branches to perch on. This type of owl does like to sit in the branches and jump, swoop down from them onto their prey. So this wooded pasture area of ours down by our creek should be ideal for them and help keep the rodents down back here as well as out in the fields because if they're lower here there's not going to be as many to go out into the fields for us. I'll show you the rest of the spots I've mounted them up here in the next little few minutes. So 
one of the big things to remember with this, putting these natural workers to work for you is do your homework, research where they're going to want to be at, where they should be at. Watch on your own farm or your own property and see where they're at. Be patient. It may take a couple of years for them to get there and to find where you're putting up the boxes and get nesting. And enjoy. Every time you see them out there working, they're working toward the same goal you are. So just keep that in mind and enjoy. And as time goes on, I'll put a few more videos up to see if these boxes get some residents in them. If we get some workers out here on our farm and I'll try and get some uh, video of those uh, hawks and owls at work out here for you. Thank you again and enjoy uh, this video and all the rest of ours.